Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Programming. I'm Naveen Mishra and I'll continue teaching you how to write programs in C++ language. In my previous video, I have discussed about polymorphism and implemented function overloading that was the part of compile time polymorphism. In this video, I'll continue with the next topic of compile time polymorphism that is operator overloading. Before you start this video, I would like to tell you guys to please watch my videos, subscribe to my channel and share this channel with your friends. Ok, so let's start with this video, operator overloading. Uh, in the previous video, the, the polymorphism looked like this one. I have covered function overloading, but in this video, I will cover operator overloading. Ok, so let's start. Now what are operators? Uh, you guys must have known this thing. Uh, because uh, if you have watched my videos or video tutorials of C or C++ language, if not, I will suggest you guys to please watch my operator uh, video for C language. Okay, so what are operators? Operators are the special symbols that tells the compiler about the operation to be performed. Now all the operators till now you guys have doing for working for the basic data type. If you want to perform the same operations for the objects or the user defined class user defined data types you need to overload them so first of all about operator overloading it is a part of polymorphism now in c++ you guys were doing that like you have declared three variables a b c which are of integer data type you have placed the values of a and b and then you are adding this value this is perfectly fine and c++ compiler knows how to do the op how to do the addition or subtraction of the basic data type but what about if what but what but what about the user defined data type now here a i have created a class a which is a user defined data type and have declared three objects a b c i have placed the values in a and b using the get functions but when i write this c is equals to a plus b it will not work because the compiler will never come to know that what is inside the a the what is inside the object a because in the object a can have three variable values four variable values five variable values even after that uh, the variable data type is not known the variables might be string the variables might be character okay so to perform the operators overloading for this user defined data type you can use the operator overloading that is you have to define your own operators inside your class uh, <coughs> one example of operator overloading can also be like that for integers, it provides you the third value. For example, you have done 10 plus 20 here. So it will produce the answer 30. But what about the strings? If you place two strings like united in double quotes and place a plus symbol, then followed by states in double quotes, then the compiler will produce the result of united states because the compiler knows that it is a string data type and the addition of string means you have to concatenate the two strings but not in integer like if it is considered as string then 10 plus 20 will produce 1020 which is considered as a string so the compiler automatically performs the overloading at the background based on the data type for integers it produces third value but for the strings it produces the concatenation of the two strings okay so we'll focus here about the user defined data types uh, like class objects and how to add the values inside the class objects okay so we must know the rules of operator overloading so when you have decided to overload the uh, overload the operators and you want to add or subtract or perform any kind of any kind of operation on your uh, class objects then you have to follow these rules first of all you cannot create your new operator like uh, star dot colon you cannot produce your own operators only the existing operators can be overloaded you cannot create your new operators if you overload two or three operators at the same time for example plus and minus and multiply then the syntax rule as well as the associativity or presence will be the same as of the basic data type for example we guys we guys know about the bed mass symbol bed mass operations like bracket then exponential then division then multiplication then addition the compiler will automatically knows that and will perform the operation on the basis of that rule for your class data types okay now you can overload all the operators but some operators cannot be overloaded 
okay so these are the operators that you cannot overlook overload scope resolution operator dot operator for class membership ternary operator pointer to member operator which is dot star as well as this arrow operator and the size of operator so you cannot overload these operators uh maybe because uh, they belong they work on the objects or the user defined data types as well so that's why you cannot overload these operators now if you are overloading the uh, op operation operators then one of the operands must be of user defined data type like one can be integer but one must be of basic data of user defined data type like object okay now operators like this equals to and and are by default overloaded and comma as well because they can work for the user defined data type as well as for the basic data type so these are by default overloaded the rules are continued uh, i have told you about friend functions as well you can use the friend function and mix it with the overload and with the operator overloading and perform the overloading of these operators as well you cannot perform the overloading of these operators as well so for that you know when you are performing unary operator overloading now unary means where only one operand is used and if you are performing the overloading of unary operators it will not take any explicit argument and it will not have any return type so it will explicit means you have you don't have to define it okay if you are performing binary operator overloading for addition of two numbers or subtraction or comparison of two numbers then you must pass one explicit argument and when you are using binary operator overloading by means of member function the left hand operand must be of object of the relevant class for example you are saying a1 plus a2 now a1 must be of user defined data type you cannot say integer value a plus object a2 you cannot do that you can say a2 plus an integer value okay now binary arithmetic operators like these plus minus multiplied by must explicitly return the value as well so you have to return the data type if you are performing binary operator overloading now you have to remember the syntax as well so if you are creating an operator overloading class a pro, uh, program for operator overloading then inside your class you must write an operator like this so return type of the operator followed by the class name then the scope resolution then the operator like plus minus multiply divide whatever you are doing and then the argument list or objects you are passing or the basic data type you are passing you can pass the value here then inside the function body you can write your code and perform the operator overloading now I, uh, i have told you again here operator means the symbol of operator that you want to overload like plus minus multiply divide now operator overloading generally can be categorized into two types unary and binary okay so unary operator overloading means you uh, the operators which need only one operand like a plus plus a minus minus plus a minus a overloading this will be categorized as unary operators binary operator means comparing two values uh greatest between two values or sum of two values or subtraction of two values then it is called binary operator overloading as they need two op operands for the calculations so i have written the program and i will try to explain it to you using the image so let's start with the unary operator overloading now this is the program that i have written i want to explain this program because i can write this program but it will take too much time and i won't be able to understand uh, teach you that how it works in a better way uh while writing uh i can teach or understand or help you understand this program in a better way in this video in in here with the ppt so unary u1 as soon as you place an object unary u1 here inside the main function unary is the class here you see this is a class unary as soon as you create an object of the unary class u1 an object is created and the all the variables inside the class like abc will be allotted some memory with the null reference when you say u1.get then this get function will be called abc values will be asked by the user and let's say suppose user add puts three values in a it puts 5 in b the user puts minus 6 and in c the user puts 9 okay so these values are placed inside the u1 object now if you use the show function then these values will be displayed to you because i have displayed abc values here so 5 minus 6 and 9 will be shown to you now what if you do this plus plus u1 it means you are overloading the plus plus unary operator okay here in 28th line as soon as you write this the compiler will go inside your unary class and look for the matching operator keyword so in the 17th line 
plus plus and this plus plus matches so 28th line control is transferred to the 17th line now you don't need any arguments here and you don't need any return type here as I have told you the rule in the previous slides okay so as soon as you write the 28th line the control is transferred to the 17th line and here I have performed the basic plus plus or minus plus plus uh, operation like uh, the value a is integer and here inside this I am performing the integer uh, operator working so plus plus a value is added and displayed in a then followed for b then followed for c and once calling this plus plus operator if I call the show function again now these values will be overloaded so 5 will be incremented by 1 to 6 minus 6 will be incremented by 1 to minus 5 and 9 will be incremented to plus 1 10 uh, you guys can see the output here as well so enter numbers a b and c uh, the same programs output is there so 5 minus 6 9 is displayed it is shown to you then unit operator overloaded then these values are incremented by 1 so this is the program of unary operator overloading okay you guys can perform the operator overloading for minus minus operators by minus minus operator by yourself that is decrement operator overloading you can perform it by yourself okay now let's start with some a tougher topic about binary operator overloading it is a little bit tough to understand and implement so let's start with this binary operator overloading okay uh, so this is the class I have created for the binary operator overloading okay and this is where I call the binary operator overloading inside the main function the program was very large so I divided it into two photos okay so when I created this binary class I have defined two variables a and b inside the public access I have a get function and a show function where I am entering the values and then reading these values or displaying these values to the user uh, I have overloaded the binary operator here I will teach you how it works okay and inside the main function I have created three objects t1, t2 and t3 okay when I do this three objects will be created in the memory so binary t1, t2, t3 will create three objects in your memory without any values when I call this get function for t1 and t2 this function will be executed a and b values will be asked from the user and it will be added in the object t1 and t2 so a equals to 5 b equals to 6 and a equals to 9 b equals to 3 for objects t1 and t2 respectively will be performed after this 29th line then 30th and 31 and 32 and 33 lines I have displayed the values of these objects okay so there is no problem till here then in the 36th line I have written this line t3 is equals to t1 plus t2 so this is where I am adding two uh, two objects and to perform this operator oh, operator overloading I have to write operator here so when I write this line the compiler will again look for this overloaded operator inside the binary fun binary class and will transfer the code to the 17th line now it is a little bit different as compared to the uh, unary operator overloading first of all uh, this t1 and t2 the plus the plus operator here in the left hand of the plus operator have a t1 object and in the right hand is a t2 object this t1 object will act as a calling operator and this t1 is automatically passed to the uh, 17th line but the t2 must be passed using an argument so I have written an argument here the t2 object is of data type binary that is of class binary so I have to define the argument here of binary t2 I can write any name here t1, t7, t9, t11 but for the convenience of the users I have used the same name okay so this t2 is passed here using arguments but this t1 is passed automatically because it calls the uh, calls this operator overloading okay so once I transfer the control into this block I have created an another object minor t3 and inside this operator function another t3 object is created now what I'll say is a in the 20th line a plus t2 dot a now this a by default belong to t1 because uh, t1 is automatically passed here so this value a5 will be added with t2 a that is 9 and 5 plus 9 equals to 14 will be placed in the t3 a object and again for b 
this b is of t1 object will be added with object t2 b that is 3 and the addition of that will be stored in the t3 b variable as you guys can see here so 5 plus 9 equals to 14 and 6 plus 9 equals to 9 now i have to return this value to this object because here when i say t3 equals to this operation then i expect whatever answer this uh, expression performs will be stored back in this t3 object so I have created a t3 object and returned this t3 object to the 36 line and to if you are if I'm returning the value then I need a return statement here and the data type of the return must match with the return type here so this t3 is of binary class so binary uh, is used to uh, used as a return type and when I write this 22nd line the control is transferred here in t3 and these values 14 and 9 are passed to the t3 object that's it, binary operator overloading is performed and this 37th line will show the output of this operator overloading to you. Uh, you can see the output here. So the same thing, 5, 6 values in the first object, 9, 3 values in the second object, then these values are displayed to you. Then sum of two object values like this binary operator called 14 and 9 will be shown to you. So I hope you guys have understood this program. Uh, there is another program that you guys can do by yourself that is of uh, operator overloading of greater than or less than operator so I'll write this program for you guys I'll save my time so class compare because I will compare two values so get show will be the same and here I'll say compare and after adding this value I will compare this values so I'll say see out objects so what I have to do is I have to write it inside the if so t1 greater than t2 so as soon as I write this line I have to create the operator so again this t1 and t2 will work here and compare compare here will read this t2 objects t1 is passed automatically and I have to write the I have to change the operator as well so I will change it to greater than here what I will do is if t2 dot a is greater than t2 dot a I will make it easier and will use only one variable so let me cut this thing And if it is, then it returns true, and else it returns false. Now, since it is returning true and false, I have to use the return type bool. And if it is true, then I'll say C out T1 object is greater than T2. And if it is not true, then I'll use else. And I'll say T2 object is greater than I don't need this T3 and I don't need this T3 here. Okay. Let's, I think it should work perfectly. So it asks me two values. I'll say 20 and 5. And it says T1 object is greater, absolutely right. And if I do this again, and I'll say 62 and 99, and it says second object is greater. So there you go. This is an overloading of comparison operator. This this is also an important topic. Uh, return type is bool because bool is also a, used uh, as an inbuilt data type, which is used to store either true or false. And using this bool operator, I have returned the status to this T1 and T2 object. So I hope you have understood this topic. That's it from this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.